So Hyper-V Workstation version 8 now allows nesting of hypervisors. And if you choose to nest ESX, it's very easy. If you would like to nest Hyper-V, it's also very easy now through a couple modifications that have been given to me by Veeam.com. So the guys at Veeam and gals at Veeam have made it much easier to go through this process. Uh, easier than beating your head against the wall until you figure it out yourself. So, the initial steps here are to go in and create a new VM. We're going to go ahead and choose Workstation 8. We can choose our OS installer, choose the version that we would like, and Create the VM as usual. I created the VM earlier and I've since removed it and I didn't want to start from scratch so I'm just going to re-add it again. And of course it knows that I created it earlier and it's just telling me so. Alright, so add our processors, give it 10 gigs of RAM, use Bridge network. And we're going to go ahead and use an existing disk. And grab that real quick. Not going to power it on yet, and we're going to go to customize hardware. So under processors, you'll see virtualize Intel VT. Uh, you want to choose that and go to automatic. Now, the major caveat here. And you can use an application called CPU-Z to figure this out. You have to have VT-X uh, enabled on your processor. Since I do, life is good. We're going to go ahead and add another hard drive that I created earlier. Or not. because the hard drive's already in there. Or is it? And it disappeared. So let's go ahead and grab hard drive, add our secondary. Hyper-V disk two. Hopefully that's the right one. All right, so before we start up, we now want to browse to our config file and open it with Notepad, or at least that's what I did. I don't know if that's the... Uh, the best method for doing so. Then we're going to paste in this little string that I got from the Veeam website and then save the file. Now we are ready to go ahead and start up the virtual machine. Veeam also talks about doing this in ESXi. Uh, so I imagine if you had a real ESXi environment and you weren't double nesting this in a lab, you might do that. In this case, I don't feel like it's necessary to nest the hypervisor within a hypervisor within a hypervisor. And the reason I say that is if I want to play around with uh, different labs, I can pause the ESX lab, which also is provisioned for 10 gigs of RAM, put in a suspend mode, play with Hyper-V, unpause it, you know, so I can switch between environments this way, so that's why I'm kind of choosing to keep them separate. And VMM is supposed to be able to do some things with the cloud and, and ESX, so it might be nice to have it hanging around.
what we're going to do. Oh boy, forgot to rename it. So we're going to call this Hyper B Server. And let's go into the settings real quick. All right, so we're going to capture our install. And I already had the Hyper V role installed. And you can actually get away with installing the Hyper V role without making that um, change in the config file and you'll just get a partition error, but it will actually let you install it. All right, so we're gonna make a new VM. We're gonna call it DPM. And I like to store the VMs and the hard drives in their own folder. Makes it easier to manage. And I think VMM kind of does that already. Let's just go ahead and get this server started. And we're going to use our oops, physical drive, if you will. All right, so now we're creating our disk. And voila, no partition error. So this is going to be the uh, first step in setting up our private cloud environment for the Microsoft CEP program and, and the 2012 uh, private cloud. And once again, special thanks to Veeam for putting this right up together. I will do a blog roll in the uh, YouTube video. So as you can see, we're well on our way to installing Server 2008 R2 in a nested Hyper-V environment.